Dit is Papa Alfa 0 Eco Tingo Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag 17 oktober 2015. Dit is het bulletin van zaterdag. Zoals altijd zijn de uitzendingen van de Daily Minutes in het weekend in het Engels. As every weekend our show today is in English. The first item we have is as usual the propagation bulletin of the RGB. This time in the version of TX Factor. Second is an item of the CBC show Spark of last week about an incident with a drone. Those are prohibited in Canada, even more than in the US and Europe. At the end of the show we have a small piece of a couple of seconds in the chat mode FSQ, which stands for Fast and Simple QSO. Properties are Speed 4.5 and Centering around 1500 Hz, as FL Digi does as a default. Of course we also have some Morse code. Hello, this is Mike Marsh, G1IAR, and welcome to the TX Talk podcast of the GB2RS National News for Sunday the 18th of October 2015, supplied by the Radio Society of Great Britain and brought to you by TX Factor. And now the radio propagation report compiled by G0, Kilo Yankee Alpha, Golf 4, Bravo Alpha Oscar and G3, Yankee Lima Alpha on Friday the 16th of October. Well, we've had another week of unsettled HF conditions. Geomagnetic storming was observed on Monday at high latitudes as a high-speed solar wind stream flowing from a geoeffective coronal hole caused some problems. By Wednesday, the KP index had peaked at 5 and the bands were left noisy with only fairly local European stations audible on 40 to 20 metres. The solar flux index was 96, but conditions were dominated by the negative effects of the solar wind. The Chilton Ionosond showed the critical frequency to be just 5.4 MHz at noon on Wednesday, giving a predicted maximum usable frequency of only around 15.4 MHz over a 3,000 km path. Thursday was a lot better, with 21 MHz opening up, showing what a difference a day can make. The poor conditions due to coronal holes will likely continue on and off for the coming week, and sky watchers, especially around the Arctic Circle, should be alert for more visual aurora once it's dark. It's not all bad news, though. There is DX to be heard if you like to look for it. Mike, 5 Hotel 3 Echo Echo in Tanzania, was 599 plus on a 20-metre dipole on Wednesday evening when little else could be heard on the band. And now the VHF and upwards propagation news. Well, it looks like another week of mainly high pressure on the charts over the UK, although there will be some lows passing by to the north. Most areas should have a chance of slight lift conditions on occasions during the week, and the high is likely to move from north to south and then later divide, leaving one centre to the east and another to the southwest. Now, the way tropo works means that the ducting is better at higher frequencies and then slowly improves at lower frequencies as the temperature inversion develops. Now, even if you don't operate on the gigahertz bands, you can always check for activity on the cluster to watch for increased activity on 23 and 70 centimetres before it shows up on 2 metres. Check the SSB and the CW segments, as well as FM, and of course look out for those beacons, the telltale sign. And the new RSGB yearbook has all the latest lists and frequencies. The Orionids meteor shower, one of the two created from the debris of Halley's Comet, peaks in the early hours of Tuesday morning, so keep your eyes peeled for an enhanced meteor scatter opportunity on 2, 4 and 6 metres. The moon is at maximum negative declination tomorrow, so some short EME windows will start to lengthen and losses decrease as we go towards perigee on the 26th. And that's all your news from the Propagation team this week. Last month in September, a drone crashed in Pasadena, California. Debris from the drone hit an 11-month-old girl, cutting and bruising her on the head. This past June, at a pride parade in Seattle, a drone knocked a 25-year-old woman unconscious. And then there's the story of Joseph O'Neill. Hello. Joe's a funeral director in London, Ontario. He's also pretty serious about his hobby, drones, or as he prefers to call them, UAVs. 
UAVs, yeah, or quads, because the one I got is four propellers. Joe uses his UAV to take aerial photos and videos of his city, London. You can see many of them on YouTube. But a little while ago, Joe ran into a bit of trouble. Well, it was early Sunday morning. Um, the Even though I live downtown in the core of the city, some of the power lines go back to the 60s, and they were finally upgrading them. So early Sunday morning, they have the street blocked off, and uh, London Hydro's outside. They're installing the new transformer, and it's taking them a long time. So I go out, and I'm talking to the guy, and I forget, this is about 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning. They're starting early. And uh, I say, boy, it takes you guys a long time, and he's going through all the safety procedures. And I say, okay, I can understand that, and you do this and that. And I made a joke. I said, well, if you guys, you know, mess up, I said, you're right next to the funeral home. I'll look after you real quick. And he kind of grinned. And uh, I don't know how we got started. It was maybe talking about different types of cameras that they use, uh, you know, for the line inspection. I told him I had a UAV. And he says, you know, he says, I always wondered if those things would be useful. He said, uh, so what we decided on, he says, don't put anything public YouTube, but he says, if you want to go across the street in the parking lot, there's a, a parking lot for the local high school, holds about 180 cars, it was totally empty. He says, if you take a short five-minute video and then just give me the copy, he says, I'd love to take it back to head office, and we'll just look at it for ourselves internally, informally. He said, you know, maybe someday we might get one of these things. And I said, sure. So I take it across the street. And he says, oh, you just go up, fly up in the air? I said, no, 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 you've got to go through and do a whole risk assessment. And he, I said, flying one of these is just like you guys. I said, you take an hour to, you know, make sure you're, you're not uh, going to cook yourself or fry yourself on the lines there. So I said, first of all, I said, check the wind. He said, yeah, wind's okay. And I said, there's no hawks in the area. We do have hawks living in the area. They get a little protective. I said, no, there's no traffic on the ground. And I said, in fact, you know, the police are blocking off traffic at one end. So I said, perfect situation. He says, yeah. So we take the thing up in the air, and it's sitting up in the air. I took it up about 75, 80 feet and just level, and I'm just letting it sit there. And one of the officers I know who was there, he pulls over in his van, and he says, Hey, Joe, can I watch this too? I said, Sure. He says, It's kind of cool. I always wanted to see one of these. He says, We've been talking about the station getting one, but, you know, it's just talk. So we're just all standing there, and the thing is hovering in midair, I took a two-minute video, I took a couple still pictures, and two minutes into the second video, all of a sudden there's a large bang in the middle of the air, and it was so loud that even the guys on the poles all jumped. Somebody thought they had cooked themselves, and I had actually had the quad, uh, when they pulled the van up, I actually had the quad a little ahead of the van, about 10, 15 feet, but the force of the bang, whatever it was, the darn thing flew right down, and one vehicle in the entire parking lot it lands right on the hood of the van the police van and it lands right above the the model of the london police where it says deeds not words smashes itself to pieces right there right on top of deeds not words so i'm sitting there i'm looking at this and i'm going oh god i'm screwed for life oh this is the worst thing that could ever happen to me so anyhow the officer turns to me says joe he says grab that thing don't go away he says i'm in so much trouble and I go to the police officer, oh, you are? He says, yeah. He says, nobody at this station will ever believe a drone smashed on a police van. Can you wait here till the sergeant comes so I can prove to him that this is how the damage is actually done? There was a little bit of damage, not much, but there was enough he had to make a report. So I said, sure, okay, I, I'm good. I don't want to get you in trouble. You know, my one uncle was a crash investigator for the Air Force, and their uncle was a flight instructor for the RCAF, and they're probably both spinning in their graves at a million miles an hour over that one. And the only other thing that happened afterwards is one of the sergeants I knew from the uh, from the station uh, gets a hold of me later in the day. He said, Joe, I heard you took pictures. I said, yeah, you need some for the uh, investigation. He says, no, we want some for the lunchroom. He says, we never had one of these before. It's first in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody was doing everything by the book, and you still had an accident happen. So in the years to come when I tell that story, I'll be able to point out that, hey, no matter how careful you are, things can still happen. That's Joseph O'Neill telling the story of how his quadrocopter fell out of the sky onto a police van.